Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Inno Setup Compiler. So this is the way I create setup files now. I tried Wix, but I really didn't want to learn about Wix and all the stuff, all the syntax and all that, so I went with something a bit more abstracting. So I'm going to open up Inno Setup Compiler and we're going to create a new script file using the script wizard. And I'm just going to hit next and you're presented with some options here. This is a wizard to help you create your setup file. So there's obvious deficiencies in the wizard if you were to use it more than once. Um, and uh, you, you are able, if you want to, you can really create your own wizard to uh, generate uh, the setup script and then you can open it up in this program when it's done and compile it or you can just write a patcher. I wrote a patcher to um, patch or to change certain things in the document after it's been generated. Not the document, the script. So I'm going to type in the name of the program that I want to um, set up. So TPB for Windows. This is an end user application. I typically do installers for end user apps. Uh, users like it. It's on. I don't know what version it's on. Um, I'm going to open up a fourth instance of Visual Studio. And I'm just going to go into the assembly info. I'm on version 1.0.2. So. I'm going to do 1.0.2 and the publisher Ablobus and my website. So this is typically like a support page for your application but I don't have one so I've just taken them to the home page of my site okay so this is the destination we're just gonna leave that default and now we're gonna select the main executable file so I'm gonna go into projects and user base TPB for Windows bin release TPB so I typically do my release um, which I'm call it builds sometimes if you're using certain debug features and you use your debug build and it's not running in a, the debug environment you it just will crash because you're attempting to use debug features that require a debugger to be attached okay so we're gonna hit add files here and I don't think there's anything that I can add sometimes it's a PDF it's just gonna be put in the same location um, of the executable so I'm gonna hit next and we're going to allow the user to disable the start menu folder creation and down here you can check whether or not to create a desktop icon. Okay, I'm going to skip this stuff here and languages so if you only have one language selected then it's just going to not prompt for, for a language because that would be silly but if you have more than one then it will prompt for a language at the very beginning of the setup wizard and when the user selects the language everything in the setup wizard is automatically translated to that wizard I mean language sorry okay so let's set the custom compiler output folder so that's the destination of the uh, output setup file so let's do that I'm gonna put that directly in the projects or the solutions directory TPB for Windows and the compiler output base file name. I'm going to call this TPB setup. And you you can select a custom setup icon. I just use the default one. I like it. And we're going to use uh, define compiler directives. It just makes the code easier to edit. And I'm going to hit finish. And it's just it just generated a bunch of um, code for us, or a script that is. 
its code, whatever. And we can compile it now. So it's, so it's going to take the script and compile it into the setup um, file. And we need, we should probably save the script. Why not? I'm going to save it in my solution directory. I'm just going to call this in a setup script. And it has been, it has compiled. So let's go find where it is and run it. Okay, so here's the setup file. And up above we have the setup script and I spelled setup wrong. So let's run the setup file here. It's got the default icon. We're going to hit next. It's in English. It's going to install the programs files, x86. And we're going to create a start menu thing. That's not really necessary in this case because it's only one item being the executable. And we can create a desktop icon. Now note, it doesn't automatically check this by default and there's nothing in the the setup setup wizard that allows us to um, set the default but we will encode because this is very much desirable should be checked by default okay so we're going to check that hit next and we have an option at the end to launch dpb for windows okay so everything checked out let's take a look at some of the stuff to make sure it's uh, installed correctly so I'm just going to um, go into the control panel and then un uninstall a program or you can do this from NO setup script by going to tools add remove programs and scroll down and find your program so it's called TPB for Windows now we have some things that are undesirable here we have no icon for the uninstall icon and it appended the name with version 1.0.2 which is redundant because the version is over to the right here so we want to fix that and we're going to do that right away so I have a patcher to do most of this work if you're interested in the patcher then let me know and I'll post it somewhere um, so the first thing that we need to do is alter the app version name so I'm going to remove this comment here and then remove this my app version uh, constant or whatever you want to call it and then that defines the app version name so that the version is not appended to the uninstall name okay and at the end of the, the setup category here whatever it's called I actually don't know what's going on with this script I just kind of I took a guess at what's going on and kind of figured things out so you can use this IntelliSense thing to find different things to set up um, so we're gonna set the uninstall icon the uninstall display icon so um, I'm gonna have to figure out where this is so I'm gonna go find the path so I'm gonna copy this path here and the icon is called skull.ico. So I'm going to paste the path in there. Don't wrap it in quotations. And call this skull.ico. Now I have my uninstalled display icon. Okay, and here is where we're going to change up a bit so that the create desktop icon checkbox is checked by default. And all we have to do is remove flags unchecked and I do believe that's all we need to do for this so we're gonna build this again or well, we're gonna compile it and then go reinstall it and see how it looks then okay this time around we're going to start the installer by just going to run and then hitting run you can use F9 if you want to. And this is um, this welcome page here. You can disable this as well with a variable. I think you'll find it. And um, just uh, keep going. And now we should have fixed our previous problem. So let's take a look at the 
uninstall thing in the control panel and we're going to scroll down and it looks nice now so we got our icon TPB for Windows and no version information if you, if you actually look at it about half of the installs here have the version info next to the name personally I think that you should probably not do that just because it's more readable to the user they're likely not going to care about the version number if they are then they're going to take the time to look at the details to the right anyways that's it for this video see you later